Yeah, I know I can't. People die for that. I tell my boys that all the time. Yeah, you sound like my mom. I was going to say. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have to move on. Okay. My mom got mad at me. I just heard a guy on the radio say, I'm 68 years old and I've never voted. And I thought, what? I voted last time for Mitt Romney. Yeah, I voted for Mitt. I didn't do anything, so then that I lost my faith in voting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I have very little faith in the vote, to be accurate, to be honest with you. Very yeah. little, which is very sad. Wow, this is kind of it's over. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We can do the clock thing, are we good? No. We're good? I told him how to use time code. We got matched time code, so. Oh, yay, time code, I'm glad. Okay. Ready? Okay, mm -hmm. I just needed to print out your name so I get it right. Okay. A and well Andrew and then ID. ID. Okay, that's what I thought. E -E. Kean. Kean. Norman. Okay. Well, Andrew, let's start with you first. Talk about transferring from Southern Utah to BYU. What What did that mean to you to make that jump? Um. Well, to be honest, I knew I was going to go to BYU for schooling when I was done at SU with football, and so I knew that it was only a matter of time that I came up here, but. Uh, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that I was going to transfer from SU to play football at BYU. So uh, when I learned about the opportunity, when I when I learned about the graduation transfer rules, and that uh, you know that it was a possibility, it, you know it was it was probably the hardest decision I've ever made in my entire life because I spent so much time at SU building that program to be you know go to the playoffs to uh, the last three seasons, then we won conference championship. I felt like I had established a lot there. But then I thought about, you know, because I'm from Orem, and my dad's a professor here at BYU, and I have a lot of family around here that, you know, wasn't able to make it out to Cedar to see me play sometimes. And so there was a lot more into this decision than just football. Uh, there was a lot of family aspects and a lot of, you know, professional opportunities that, that were coming along with this and so it was a very conflicting decision but I know that it was the right one after seeing how everything's played out and it was a gratifying um, opportunity as well. How will it be for you to play against your former teammates? Um, well it's, it's going to be strange because I mean I've we've gone against these guys a lot of times you know during practice when I was down there but in a game setting it's it's completely different because you know yeah you want to win in practice but now it's game time. Like you're, in fr I'm in front of the like sixty thousand fans, and these guys want to beat us really bad. I just I know it, and they they want to see how they stack up against us, and you know, because I remember what it was like at the FCS level playing FBS teams, and it is a huge confidence booster when you can win a couple plays. And I know that you know they're probably thinking, oh, like we've gone against Keen and Andrew a million times, like. We can do this, and so I have to. We really have to make a name for ourselves again, going against our own teammates. Like we're not the same kind of players. I know they've gotten better as well, but um, you know, this is going to mean a lot. This game, and a lot of people don't realize that. <laughs> your thoughts, Kian, on that? On playing against your former teammates? Oh, uh, I mean, I mean, some of my best friends are down there. Uh, one of my best friends, Kyle Hanneman, Micah Hanneman's older brother. He's my best friend from high school, so it'll be fun. Um, Football's football, though, once you get out on the field. Uh, you kind of forget who you're playing against, to be honest. And so, I mean, it'll be interesting in between plays. I'm sure we'll joke around and stuff. But, you know, playing football is the same no matter who you're playing. So. What did you find is the biggest adjustment coming from the big sky and up mm -hmm. to BYU in Division One? As far as football? Yeah, just, aspect? yeah. Uh -huh. okay. did, you, did you see a as big difference? As far as football, I mean. I mean Mississippi State, yeah. those kind of guys. Honestly, there's some very talented guys at the FCS level, but I think the biggest difference is depth. Whereas the SU would play against some really good players, but once the backups came in, they it dropped down. But at the FBS level, every guy you're going against is a big time recruit. So I think that's been the biggest difference for me. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on going against your own teammates, and is it going to be weird? Um, I don't. I mean, I don't do, you want to, do you want to beat them? Yeah, I mean, really obviously, you always want every time you play any type of game. You know, if you're a competitor, you want to win. So obviously, we want to win, but. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't treat it like any other game. I mean, a lot of my buddies are playing, but, you know, you, you play against your buddies your whole life in sports. So, Talk about the O-line this year. Your thoughts on it. You guys came right in and started mm -hmm. right away uh, because of two different players yeah. that uh, did, didn't come back for whatever reason. Your thoughts on being an immediate starter and making an impact? I mean, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I really like how our offense works. You get to play a lot more physical. Um, 
So I've really enjoyed it. It's it's been a really fun year, and I feel like our O line's really come together. We've been running the ball very well. So this is going to seem really strange, guys. But when the other one talks, can you look at him? Just because yeah. we we're going to have really little B roll of you guys, if you know mm -hmm. what that is, like video. <coughs> so yeah. we're going to have to do some cutaways. So if you don't mind, uh, your thoughts on that on the O line and coming right in and, and becoming a starter right away. Um. Well, I mean, we, we knew coming into it that it wasn't just going to be given to us. You know, Coach Epi, after we committed and got that release from SU, he's like, I'm not going to guarantee you a starting spot, but I know you guys are competitors and I know you guys will work for it. And so the first week and a half of camp, uh, me, Kian, and Tijon were actually second string. And, you know, Coach Epi gave the other guys a chance to start, but, you know, we worked hard and we got that starting position. And so uh, it was a really gratifying experience having to work and get, and get up there. I mean, you know, it was just something I remember really, you know, the challenge I haven't really had because, uh, you know, at SU we kind of started right from the get-go because they don't, like Ken said, we didn't have that depth. But here, you know, we had to really work for it. And I was going against some really good players on the defense like Harvey Longy and, and Moses and, and those guys. So I'm like, whoa, like I have to earn a starting spot and get used to this kind of caliber of players all the time. But, you know, it all worked out how I, how I wanted it to, and, you know, it's been a really good experience so far. Now, you've already graduated in exercise science, so what kind of classes do you take now at BYU? Um, I actually graduated in psychology and, oh, psychology. and Spanish. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Somebody gave me the wrong information. Yeah. I've got exercise science here. Okay. No, I, I graduated last fall with a major in psychology and a minor in Spanish, and I was actually already in grad school beginning of this year at SUU working on uh, my MPA. And so me and Ken are both in the MPA here at BYU. So we're taking um, kind of just the classes that fit our schedule. So we've taken some nonprofit management, some an MBA class about teamwork and um, ethics and stuff like that. So it's kind of more business oriented classes. That's cool. Mm -hmm. What does it feel to be already graduated and you know still trying to play football and figure out what you're going to do with your life? Um, to be honest, like sometimes it doesn't even feel like I've graduated because I went straight from, you know, graduation to grad school and I was just like, well, nothing's really changed. I'm still taking classes and, and uh, playing football. But one of the bigger benefits is uh, we don't have to take as many credits because the NCAA rules allows grad school students to take a little bit less credits. So our schedule hasn't been as busy, which has been, been kind of nice. But... Sometimes when you sit back and think about it, you're like, well, that's actually pretty cool. Like grad school and playing football at the same time, it's, it's a kind of a neat experience. What is it like for you to play on the same side of the, uh, same side of the line with each other? Um, it's cool because last year he was center and I was tackle, so we didn't really play next to each other. And I didn't feel like I had um, the kind of chemistry that we have now as an offensive line. And so um, it, was, it was neat to be able to play on the same side because we went through the transfer process together. We were roommates, uh, you know, before he got married, we were roommates. And then after he got married, we were roommates in football. So I think that since we spend so much time together, it helps our, our chemistry and communication out on the football field. And so I, it's been kind of a cool experience. So make sure you got this right. You graduated cum laude in economics. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So are you, are you, are you like, he graduated sort? cum laude too. Did you really? Yeah. Wow, I'm the two brains here. How or the SE is easy one, too. <laughs> Did you want me to put that on the air? No. Okay. <laughs> so that is awesome that you guys have, obviously, you're doing what you love on the football field, but in the classroom as well. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to you to graduate at that level? Um, I mean, it, it kind of was just expected. of I expected of myself, you know, uh, ever since high school, I was, was like, you know, school honestly isn't that hard if you show up and you do your homework you're gonna get good grades and you know so it's it was kind of a little bit more of a challenge in, in college football because you get less sleep and you're you're you know you're in meetings from like 2 30 p.m until like 8 30 at night you're in meetings and practice and so you're like well i have to kind of manage and so my first semester of college was kind of hard but then you know, you learn how to do it, and then you look back when you see, you know, when you graduate at that level, you're like, well, you know, it was, it was worth it putting school first, you know. Uh, it's, it's just kind of that accomplishment, you know, you can look back and be proud of, and I'm, I'm glad I did it, and Keen feels the same way, so. So what do you want to do with it, with your, uh, your degree? Um, 
I always wanted to work in higher education, like at a university level, or in human resources at some kind of business. Okay. Who's smarter of the two? Definitely Kian. <laughs> <laughs> we have different levels of intelligence. Kian's is definitely higher than mine. Who's, smart, who's stronger of the two? Andrew, by far. <laughs> Andrew's a gym guy. Yeah, I'm the meathead, and he's the intellectual. <laughs> so you make a good combination on the field, right? There you go. Yeah. So, Key, in your thoughts on graduating the way uh -huh. you did in economics, what what was that like for you? So I, uh, so even before I decided to transfer to BYU, um, I was only a sophomore at SU, but I could graduate in about five semesters. So I was looking at some MBA programs where maybe I could play one year of football and but get into a good MBA program. So it's kind of interesting how once I started looking into that, BYU, you know, offered me a scholarship in the spot. So. Um, I had to graduate a little quicker to come to BYU. I, I graduated the summer of my sophomore year, but um, I mean, it's been, it's been a good experience. I'm glad I'm graduated. <laughs> you graduated the summer after your sophomore year? Yeah, so I could, so I could play That's this year. <laughs> That's a brain. That's a brain. And you have one more year here, right? Yeah, so okay. I'm only a junior. I have so one you're going to play? You're going to play that next yeah. year and just keep going on in the master's program? Is that so the my plan was always an MBA or law school, but with the football schedule, they said law school and an MBA would be difficult so I just did the MPA and then I plan on doing the JD MPA after I'm done with football okay could you guys tell me what the MPA is master's of public administration, public administration. so it's in the business school it's like an okay. MBA but they focus more on government in the Marriott business school yeah. Kind yeah. Of thing? so okay. it's in the business school and what do you want to do with your career um, I don't know I, I kind of want to go, go into consulting or go into legal counsel for a company then work my way into an executive position but Okay, that is awesome. Your thoughts on the O-line this year as far as Jamal and, and creating holes for him. Yeah. How is it to play for the, the guy that just broke the record for the most yards for BYU? It's been a lot of fun. He makes your job very easy. I mean, sometimes you, you'll be blocking your guy. You feel like you're getting beat, but Jamal's 10 yards down the field. And, I mean, Jamal's a great guy. Very, you know, he's friends with all the O-linemen. So it's been a lot of fun to play with a guy that talented. And how about with Taysom? Taysom's a great leader. That's what I really noticed about Taysom. He is extremely competitive he's a gamer and uh, but he's a good leader and off the field he's a he's a funny guy he's fun to goof around with and stuff but it's been fun playing with those two and coming back with Ed Lamb um it made the transition easier you know a little more comfortable like I remember my first meeting at BYU I felt like I was back at SU he did the, the exact same jokes he's telling <laughs> the same jokes recycling those and <laughs> everyone's laughing except us because we've heard him ten times but <laughs> you know he he does his meetings the same way so it's, it's made the transition a little more, uh, made, it, made me more comfortable. Has uh, Jamal given you any nice gifts or anything for opening those holes? Not yet. I mean, I told him once he makes it to the NFL that he yeah. better take us out to dinner at least or something. At least? Yeah. Your thoughts on blocking for Jamal? Um, well, it's kind of crazy because, um, I mean, I, I grew up a B, like a BYU fan, and then I kind of got spiteful in high school, and I knew I wasn't going to play there, and I started cheering for Utah, and then I signed with SUU. And then, so, like, even if you hate or love BYU, you watch them, you know? And so even in college, I was watching these guys. I, was, I remember watching Jamal when he was a true freshman and Taysom, and, like, these guys were BYU. They're BYU legends. And knowing that, you know, this was a big year for Taysom coming back off, off of all that hardship, and Jamal is like, okay, he's on the verge of breaking the record. I'm like, man, we got some, some big time responsibilities. And like, I just got thrown into this whirlwind of like, okay, Jamal's gonna break the record. Taste was back for his senior year. Coach Satake his first year. We're like, wow, like this is a big deal. And we're just kind of thrown right into it. Uh, but they make it easy on us. You know, you do your job and a lot of time they make you right, even if you're wrong. And, you know, they're very positive. They don't ever, you know, a lot of a mistake that a lot of running backs and quarterbacks make is they start yelling at their O-line and Taysom and Jamal never do that. They're like, Let's, they just keep pumping us up and it makes us want to play harder. And we know that if we give them time, they're going to make a play. They're, they're playmakers. And it's been exciting. It's been very exciting watching Jamal, you know, break that record and play so well. He's just such a – he's going to make it. He's going to make it big and then we can – cash in later with them but for now for now we're just enjoying it you know enjoying the ride talk about so you beat southern utah you go to a bowl game is that going to mm -hmm. add a little bit more to the game and the importance of the game yeah of course i mean we want to go to the bulls i mean a bowl game concept is different from us because at fcs we went to playoffs if we did well and we went to playoffs twice 
but you know, bowl game is kind of a different concept. But it you know, it sounds like a really cool deal to us. And so yeah, we wanted to make this team eligible for the bowl game. Coach Chitake's first year. We wanted to finish out the rest of the season at eight and four, then go and win a bowl game, and you know, give Coach Chitake a nine and four record in his first year with a new system. And that's awesome, given this caliber of schedule. So yeah, we wanna we wanna be at SCU, get bowl eligible, and then finish out the rest of the season, and, and you know leave this program with momentum going into next year. Definitely. And that will help you since you've got another year. Talking about the mm -hmm. momentum. Your thoughts on final question: wearing that BYU on your chest when you go out there and, and mm -hmm. play play <clears throat> for BYU. I mean, I just like Andrew. I grew up in Alpine. I grew up a BYU fan. Both my parents went here. So in high school, I wanted to go to BYU. It didn't work out. Went to SCU and had a great time down there but it's been it's been a cool experience I mean uh, at the end of the day football's football but um, it's been fun playing for BYU it's been a good experience so but have both you guys played on the defensive side of the ball down there as well we play I so we played defensive line but then they switched us to the line okay both of you right yeah when so, you were yeah. down there okay so, so last year we there. both played O line okay what do you do you prefer O line D line what O line I like <laughs> I like O line it's it's Fits us better. Yeah. You guys still get the pub, though. That's okay. Really? Yeah, that never really bothered me. I mean, I played defensive end my freshman year when I was a little bit slimmer. And then I, we both played interior, like nose, and, and defensive tackle two years ago. And, yeah, you get pub when you make plays and stuff. But that never really bothered me. I just wanted to win. And, you know... We made we were better O linemen than we are D linemen, and so we made the switch. And you know, we were I was having more fun playing offensive line, even though I mean, we weren't bad D linemen, we were good. But you get a good D lineman, they become an even better offensive lineman because you bring that athleticism aspect. And so, yeah, we only get our names called out when we get a holding penalty or when we do something bad. And so, but that's just part of the game. And you know, BYU fans and, and the coaches and stuff, they're pretty good about giving us recognition. Perfect. Yeah, appraisal and yeah, it's been good. Yeah. So you, your thoughts on that? You were you both better? You think on the O line than the yeah, D line? For sure. Yeah, for sure. I was recruited as an O lineman in high school, but for whatever reason, my freshman year they put me at D line. But I feel like I've been a lot better at O line. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much awesome. for your time. Thank you. Can you sit there for just a second? I want to whip this camera around and get a cutaway.